thank you. I want to add my thanks to the Bahia Chamber, to your legislative delegation, to Mr. Minor. I appreciate the, the congregation of First United Methodist Church opening up your facility for a function like this. Uh, Pastor, thank you for that. Thank you for being here. Uh, Representative Woods, God is just the largest crowd that this meeting has ever had. Uh, I think this attendance is indicative of the interest in the mission we have for us. Over the next 74 days, America is going to make decisions. Men and women across Mississippi are going to make decisions. And we will live with the consequences of those decisions, not for a few years, but for several generations. And if there's one thing I'm convinced of, I am convinced this election is not about Alan Nunley. This election is not about Congressman Gilbert. It's about saving America. In fact, it is too important for false 32nd attack ads. America's facing serious challenges, and we need to be talking about solutions to those challenges. How will our grandchildren and their grandchildren know of the greatness of America? Will posterity enjoy the blessings of liberty secured for us by our grandparents and their grandparents before them? Will successive generations enjoy the opportunity that we enjoy? A land where any boy and girl can grow up to be whatever they want to become? Or will the greatness of America be merely a chapter in their history books? A record of what once was? <laughs> the answer to that question is in our hands. How many times over the last 19 months have you turned on the evening news, have you picked up the morning newspaper, looked at the policies of our Congress, and just shook your head? Policies that drive us deeper into debt, policies that shrink our paychecks, policies that put the federal government in more control over our daily lives. And the question we have to answer for history is will we shake our heads as we passively observe the dismantling of our liberties? Or will these misguided policies of Congress motivate us into action? Together, we can shape our own destiny. We can once again make our government a servant of we, the people. We will fight to have a society that respects the sanctity of human life and whose laws reflect that respect. We will respect the Second Amendment because we know that all ten planks of the Bill of Rights are tied together and you cannot weaken one of those without weakening them all. We will repeal Obamacare. Yeah. And we will replace it with patient-centered health care because we know what's right for our lives. We'll secure our nation. And that begins with securing our own borders and treating terrorists as enemies and not giving them the rights of the very Constitution they're attempting to destroy. We'll stop this senseless borrowing from future generations. And we will have a government that lives within its means. Now, I'm sure over the next 74 days, we're going to be hearing a lot about great programs that Washington's doing, projects that are going on in Marshall County. But 41 cents out of every dollar that our government is spending is borrowed money. There's not a family, there's not a business, there's not a church that can long survive spending that kind of money. And the bad thing, we're borrowing it from people like the nation of China. And I understand the problem. The borrower is the slave to the lender. Well, I'm not going to have my grandchild be a slave to the Chinese government of China, to the communist government of China. Now, that starts with a thriving economy that's fueled by private investment and it's driven by the 
strength and ingenuity of the American worker and farmer, and not something that's propped up with borrowed government stimulus dollars. And the first day on the job, we will fire Nancy Pelosi. In fact, one of you saw this morning's paper. Just yesterday, the Speaker of the House said that those people that are opposed to building a mosque at the site of Ground Zero need to be investigated. So if you've had a conversation at work, if you picked up your cell phone and called your brother-in-law, if you sent an email to your children and you've expressed concern about that, you need to watch out because the Speaker of the House thinks you need to be investigated. Well, that's just one more reason why she needs to be fired. Can you honestly look at the record of this Congress and say, good work? Can you look at the state of our economy? Can you look at the state of the economy in Marshall County and say, keep up the good work you're doing? Is the United States stronger and more respected in the world today than when they took over? Is the world safe? Do you believe we deserve it better? Now let me ask you a question I've been asking all over North Mississippi for the last year. You know, we live in a representative democracy where one person goes and casts a vote on behalf of others. Next January, if you had the opportunity to go cast your own vote for the third highest elected office holder in the United States of America, would any of you vote to empower Nancy Pelosi? <coughs> would your friends, would your relatives, would your neighbors, would the people you go to church with, would they vote for her empowerment? Neither will I. Now our task is not going to be easy. We've seen evidence of attacks already from the most radical of the left wing because they know that if they lose North Mississippi, they lose their power. So today, I'm asking you to join me. This is not an election of one man for an office. This is a crusade to save America. No more excessive spending. No more borrowing from our grandchildren. No more corporate bailouts. No more cap and trade. No more government intrusion. No more closed door back room deals. No more Obamacare. No more ignoring illegal immigration. No more attacks on the traditional family, and no more Nancy Pelosi. Will history record that those who had the most to lose did the least to save our liberty? Or will we, like the men and women of the greatest generation, respond when freedom is under attack? I believe we will respond because I believe America is worth saving. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you.